augmented reality, it can and probably will be a game changer for general aviation. Let's talk about it in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. I'm gonna take these off in just a minute, but I am recording the screen so you can at least see what I'm seeing and I'll play that in a minute. I've got Brad here with me. Brad, hey. welcome. Hey, thanks for having me all back. Right. Brad, <clears throat> if you follow the channel at all, I've been training Brad to uh, fly. I'm actually trying to get four flight up, but it's just kind of hung at the moment. But uh, we're gonna show you guys some stuff with augmented reality. I really do think it's gonna be a game changer. Uh, Brad, you you uh, are a student pilot, but you're a techno nerd like all of us, right. and you love your tech toys. Guilty. Yeah, let's talk about what what is VR first, what's AR? Sure, so VR, VR has been around for a number of years, and so is AR, which is augmented reality. Um, way back in the day, we had some early emerging technologies, including, I don't know if you remember Google Glass, which yep. was actually reduced down to this size, but had very limited display. But the idea of VR and having you know, 3D movies to where things have dimension to them have been progressing over the years. And Oculus, um, which has been rebranded to MetaQuest, has released a few headsets over the years. They're up to the, the three now. This is um, released in November of uh, 2023. Uh, but it's, it's really starting to pick up steam. I mean, really, they've been developing this for 10 a years. A long time, yeah. 10 years or so, maybe even more, really. And Apple's been working on theirs quietly in the background and uh, was waiting until just two weeks ago to finally release their product where they've taken a lot of the pioneering that Oculus and Microsoft has done and really tried to refine it and add a few features that were not present in these headsets and, and bring it to their, to their base. What is augmented reality? So augmented reality, it's also called mixed reality. Okay. And that is <clears throat> not just creating a virtual world around you, but creating items that are actually in your world. So the two worlds combined. And so, for instance, related to aircraft, it would be instead of just being in a VR simulator with a 3D plane, they would actually have 3D elements that would be kind of glued or stuck to your real environment, overlaid onto your environment where, for all intents and purposes, it seems like it's floating right there in front of you. So the best of both worlds. Okay, I see this, I, 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 um, I looked at Four Flight Voyager, because um, right now that's pretty much it for aviation apps that I can see two weeks in for mm -hmm. the Apple Vision. Um, it, it's just for looking around the airport and looking at traffic stuff. Right. There, there's nothing yet for the cockpit, and I've seen one or two people that have, have thrown it on in the cockpit. Be careful. Right. Um, there's, you know, it, 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 I, to me, it's, it's not safe yet, but I, I do agree. think that it's going to. I do think it's going to have an incredible impact on flying. Sure, I would agree, and I'm with you. I don't think it's safe for the cockpit yet. Um, you know, the more I think about this device, not only for airplanes, but just other applications, but especially airplanes and driving. Um, this thing, while they've reduced it down and it is sleek to a degree, it still is cumbersome. And even though you're creating an immersive world, you do get a bit of tunnel vision when you put this on. The field of view isn't as great as your peripheral vision. And so situational awareness, whether you're in an airplane or a car or wherever you're at, um, it's gonna be important to not lose that and to not be too immersed. Yeah, um, I, in, in looking at it, like I could still see when I open the show, we've got the monitor way over here, and I'm able to still see that in the peripheral while wearing that. So that's not too bad, but the, it's not like you see clearly. It's, it's a little bit affected. Right. So it's almost like you're watching a, a, a you know, virtual TV or sure. whatever. But, um, but put heads-up display on this, put traffic beam to it, Huge, huge advantage. Right. I, I know, you know I'm still training with you and looking out, having that situational awareness, looking outside the window, trying to spot traffic. It's hard until you get, kind of understand what you're looking for and the altitude you're looking for. So if you had something like this that you had strapped to your face and it was literally putting like... A, and it was tied into the ADS-B <coughs> you know, right. that which we're not there yet technology-wise, but yeah. yeah. And you've got your airspeed and you've got your... You know, heck, you're in IMC and you're doing an approach, and you got your flight director sure. right there. You now you don't need a G1000. You could actually have steam gauges. Um, of course, it's not IFR legal, but I mean, let's say we get there. I'm just projecting forward. Sure. 
um, you could wear this to do uh, an approach all the way through to minimums, you know, with steam gauges, you got your glass in front of you. Right. You're wearing your G1000. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's just another, I mean, in the history of electronics and, and aviation and avionics, it's just yet another step, another tool that we can use um, in the cockpit to um, make us better pilots. All right, so hopefully we'll start to see some, some really cool apps created for this. Um, the biggest hindrance right now I see is the price point. So you've got the Oculus. This is the latest version? That's the latest version of that, yep. So I tried it out. You had me wear both and, and do different things. This was decent mm -hmm. and um, had a lot of fun playing the games or whatever. Um, there's no doubt the Apple Vision was significantly better. But this is, what, $500, and this is $3,500. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. The, the resolution of the displays inside each of the eye, I would say, is probably about twice as good yeah. as this one, but seven times the price. So <laughs> right, right. I don't know if that Twice as good, seven yeah. times yeah. the price. Do you yep. really want to do that? So. And, there's, and there is, I mean, applications that are being developed by you know, folks like ForeFlight and such, I mean, they're going to be developed to where they're, you can spread them across different platforms. So I think you could, if you wanted to get into VR and want a more affordable price point, I, the, Quest does, the Quest 3 does a lot of amazing things, and I think you can really get your mind working and seeing the opportunities that exist for that. And, you know, this is generation one for, for Apple, and it's only going to get better from here, and the price, I think, is going to have to drop. Um, somewhat. Yeah, I don't I'm trying know. to remember did the iPhones did they drop at from the initial? I can't remember. I can't remember. It's been yeah. Well, a long leave us a comment if you remember if iPads started really high and then they went higher. So <laughs> that's what what yeah. This our audience is telling me it went higher. My guess is is that it's probably I would say so. It's a bargain right now at thirty five hundred. It's only going to go higher. Now I really think that the price point for this my prediction is going to be probably nineteen ninety nine. I think is where it's going to we're subtle at for this level. Maybe they'll make a stripped down version that'll be a little bit cheaper than that. But when you consider that an iPhone is 1200 bucks and an iPad I don't see up. Apple dropping any price. I think, I think, I agree that I've seen them drop uh, features to right. lower price, but. I they may always have a premium one that's at this price, but I yeah. think, I think right now they're looking for early adopters to check things out and see what's going on. And then when they're ready to open it up to the general market in a really big way, I think there will be a price drop. Maybe it's not. Okay, so on this yeah. Oculus, I could see through it too, but um, probably not as clear. Yeah. Um, what do you think of this in the cockpit? Um, the really cheaper with, version here. Right, in the cockpit, like right now, and I'll, I'll be honest, even with the Apple Vision Pro in the cockpit, there is, this works best, both of these work best in a bright environment. If you're flying during the day, you'd probably be doing pretty pretty well. However, a lot of times it's really bright out the window, but then your panel's a little bit darker because it's in the shade, just depending where the light's at. Uh, I would still be, with either one of these, and especially the one that's less resolution, I think you're gonna find yourself having a hard time reading your, your instruments. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than with your eyes, and I find myself- so you're gonna have to have an app that has your instruments displayed in there. Right. You'd have to have it tied in because you were trying to read the steam gauges there. I think you'll be okay, but I find myself personally trying to work on my computer and have this on that I'm doing a lot of back and forth with it. And so until it gets better, um, one thing that Apple's doing that's interesting that Oculus isn't doing is there. there's eye tracking in here. So it's looking at your eyes and depending on where you're looking at, it puts all the processing power to that area. So if you're looking in the upper left-hand corner, it's gonna put all the rendering power and sharpness there, and it's not gonna concentrate as much on peripheral. Uh, so there's some interesting advances Which is there. probably why you end up tunnel vision <clears throat> in this. Probably so. I'm sure that contributes to it. Um, but yeah, so using it, I really think the application now, where both of these technologies stand, is really good for ground training. Okay. Yep, and I think actually flying in the cockpit, like I don't think I'd feel comfortable at least in my stage of training yeah. right now, to be able to fly around with these. But any sort of ground training, um, any pre-flight, learning the controls, any sort of instruction, I think this is where its strong point is at this current point. Okay. And it will only get better. When we start getting to this point here in the cockpit, this is where I think you'll see a lot of benefits. I mean, this is probably still, I don't know, 10 years off before we get this lightweight. But then I would feel more comfortable to where 
Because right now, the cameras inside of here, when you're looking through it, everything is, you're looking at video screens. And when we can get to where we're allowing true light and optics to pass through, and then we're just projecting on top of that, uh, that's the sweet spot. All right, so we're still a little bit away. So, uh, you'll start, I know that I, we're gonna start seeing people wearing this in the cockpit right. and everything else. And I wanna be clear to all you guys, um, do not think you can fly single pilot with this on. It's a bad, bad idea now. Let's wait until we get the technology where it needs to be and where it can be safe. So um, have fun with it, play with it. But if you're gonna use it in the cockpit, please, please, please take a safety pilot and somebody who's not on it who can make sure that everything's good until everything gets tested out. I would agree. All right. Well, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget our sponsors. Uh, shows like this are made possible by them. We've got uh, Marshall Protective Services, mpsprotects.com, clemensinsurance.net. Jerry, save me over $1,000 on my insurance. Colton Mortgage, take coltontakingoff.com. Uh, Z Vision, the brightest landing taxi lights out there. 67D.com, they make the best camera tablet mounts. That commercial we did, Brad helped me shoot that, so for 67D. So uh, check them all out, support them, it supports us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time in the hangar. <laughs>